Today we will be starting something new during our math block. We will be working on multiplication. This lesson will serve as the introduction. Here you will find the common core standards that we will use. Our first standard is to interpret products of whole numbers, and our second standard is to apply properties of operations as strategies to multiply. If you scroll down, you will see where the objective is. By the end of this lesson, students will, be, will have an understanding of the basic terms used in multiplication and will be able to represent one multiplication problem in four different ways. If you go further down, you will find the first part of our lesson, which is a brain break. We start math with a brain break every day. Before students begin their math lesson, they will do a brain break that will help them with the transition into the new subject. Because some students may be nervous about starting multiplication, they will do the following brain break from a brain break website called GoNoodle. GoNoodle is a website that you can sign up for that has all types of free brain breaks. Um, for the purpose of this lesson though, I just uploaded a YouTube video so that it, what, we don't have to worry about usernames or passwords in order to log in. Um, this brain break is a pretty calm one. They do a little bit of stretching and relaxation as multiplication can be a little bit cumbersome for the first time. After the brain break, this is when we'll um, initiate the lesson. We will define multiplication as something that's already known, which is repeated addition. Um, this should help students be a little bit more relaxed about what multiplication is. Um, we'll write examples on the board. So if you do 3 times 4, it's the same as 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. 2 times 6, and as you see here, the examples. Um, if you do enough of those on the board, eventually students will grasp the fact that multiplication is simply repeated addition. After the repeated addition conversation and the tapping into the prior knowledge, we'll begin our actual lesson. Um, first, we need to define important terms in terms of multiplication. Um, the first term we should define is a factor, which are the two numbers that are being multiplied. For example, in 2 times 4, 2 and 4 are the factors. Um, on the board, underline the factors, and also we should give more than one example. We'll also go on to products, which is the answer to the problem. So for example, in 2 times 4 equals 8, 8 is the product. Again, I'll have you underline the product and give multiple examples so that they have a better understanding. The next thing we'll do is um, we'll explain to students that, that we'll be moving forward, we'll be using these terms. So they must use factor and product when talking about a multiplication problem. Um, we will go further on to say that there's other ways to represent a multiplication. This is actually the meat of the lesson. Um, notes will be taken on the board, but there will also be a handout as to what exactly we're going to write on the board um, so students have something to refer back to. Um, first, we'll talk about the commutative prop property, and we'll explain that a property is simply a rule. So this is a rule of multiplication. Um, when you change the order of a factor, the product stays the same. So for example, 2 times 3 equals 3 times 2. Um, put that example on the board along with a few others until they seem to grasp the idea. Ask for um, examples from them as well. Um, then we'll also just talk about grouping, which can be used to represent multiplication problems. Um, so you'll draw this on the board, you know, two, three groups of two squares. So that is equivalent to 3 times 2 or 3 groups of 2. Um, another way to represent would be an array. And this is an, um, this is an array here. And we'll talk about um, how it's through pictures and symbols. And they're in rows or columns. Some students might need to better understand that this is a row and this is a column. And you'll draw this example. And this represents 2 times 6. Or they have two columns that have six pictures in each row. Um, again, you might have to explain what a column in a row is, and you'll also have to provide other examples. And then after that, once students seem to get all of the ways to represent one problem, we're going to explain to students that they know four ways to represent and understand a multiplication problem. It is repeated addition, it's the commutative property can be used, it can be seen in groups or in an array model. In terms of assessment of knowledge, I'm going to have students create a poster. Um, their poster, poster will have to show all four ways to represent a multiplication problem. The problems will be given by the teacher to avoid duplicate posters. They must re represent repeated addition, the commutative property, grouping, and an array for their given problem. Um, I will also have you show them this 
example, this teacher model, um, students are free to use any materials in creating their poster. Uh, for the grouping, they must circle each group, as I have here, and they must label each of the ways. So we have the community property, repeated edition, the groups, three groups of five, and an array. Um, make sure we point these things out to the students so that it reiterates that that's what their expectations are. And they will also be given a handout with instructions and the following rubric. Be sure to ask students if they have any questions or if they need help going over the rubric as to what is expected of them. Make sure that the expectations are very, very clear. The way we'll wrap up this lesson is by having the students write in their math journals um, a reflection about the lesson. Um, we're going to use this Voki, and all you have to do is press play here, and that gives the prompt for the students. Um, it suggests questions that they should answer in their reflection. Um, it, it just pushes them a little bit more and gives them a little bit more direction as to what we're looking for in that reflection. Um, after that five, you know, five or eight minutes or so of writing, students will be able to volunteer reading their journals or discussing their thoughts and ideas, and this will conclude the lesson. Um, afterwards, it'll be the teacher's responsibility to read the journals and to check for misunderstandings, concerns, or uncertainties, and sometimes students, you know, struggle vocalizing this during class. Um, and these things will obviously need to be addressed before the student attempts the project, so it's important that these things are reviewed. And that pretty much concludes the lesson. Um, be sure to call me or contact me if you have any questions. And thank you very much.